वेरी गुड इवनिंग सर यू सो ऑनर टू हैव यू हियर ऑन अ कैंपस टुडे थैंक यू सलीम ग्रेट लेक्स इज अमेजिंग द वेदर इज नाइस या फॉर्चूनेटली इट्स नाइस सो आई एम लाइकिंग इट सो थैंक यू थैंक्स लॉर्ड फॉर स्पेयरिंग सम टाइम फॉर द फ्री ट्रिस्ट इंटरव्यू दैट वी विल हैव विद यू श्योर सब टू बी नॉट गोइंग टू टेक अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम सो स्टार्टिंग विद इट व्हाट व्हाट इट मोटिवेट यू व्हाट वाज योर इंस्पिरेशन इन टेकिंग दिस एज योर करियर प्रोजेक्टरी so um you know i come from a era when uh, where there were only uh, doctors engineers and uh, you know mba professionals uh, who kind of started so uh, not everybody would go to become chef right so um, since my childhood i knew that cooking was something i loved but i never knew that i would make it into a profession uh, i got to know about this uh, profession through a tv program Uh, looked interesting, um, you know, uh, and kind of intrigued with the glamour outside, but I did not know what I was getting in it. But as I started uh, to get inside it, I think there was no looking back. So, uh, like you use the word trajectory, I was on a trajectory because as I sat on that rocket, I think. For our school students out there, I would just want to know, like uh, the day you started your career with C C C I S S L and then J D Marriott and uh, then uh, the Menti. So uh, before starting your own entrepreneurial uh, initiative, so what do you think in terms of number of experience should a B school student or should anybody uh, serve in a particular industry before uh, they start their own? Uh, Well, uh, today, you know, the scenarios are very different than what they were uh, 20 years back. Uh, you know, generationally, uh, it was always believed that what was what is what was good for me uh, is good for you. So if I work 25 hours, you must work 25 hours. But I think the, the concept has completely changed now. Uh, today's generation is, is much sharper, much crisper, and uh, they can really do things uh, in a different fashion. So I, I won't want to comment on the fact that you know you need to work before or work after. But what I would definitely say is that yes, uh, you know, entrepreneurial journeys are 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 a great journey because you know you basically set out on a motion picture where you know that your life will be uh, filled with turbulences, your life will be filled with exciting times, uh, and and you need to be mature enough and mentally ready to handle all of that. All of that. Uh, I think that's the biggest uh, challenge because uh, uh, in any entrepreneurial journey, when the highs come. That's the problem, and when the lows come, that's the problem. So if you are able to maintain and manage those two ends, I think the the mid section is is mainly taking care. Thanks a lot for your insights. Yeah, no problem. Uh, in I read about you in uh, the main theme. Uh, your expertise and skill, uh, they, they brought a lot of fame to that particular restaurant. Yes. And that was certainly because you were very innovative and very consistent. You yeah. got a fusion between the contemporary styles into yeah. Indian culinary. There's a background to it, so. Have you finished your question? And then I'll. We would like to know about it. Okay. Yeah. So what happened was that you know I was this head, uh, you know that word, head Indian chef. Uh, why? Because my culinary training was like that. But I had also uh, studied to you know what we call as a B school for uh, York chef. So we had a B school for like the Uttar Center of Learning Development. It's a it's a very prestigious school. Uh, only a few get through. So uh, out of two and a half, three lakh students who apply. 12 get it so i was one of those uh, fortunate ones um, obviously it's very tough to get in and obviously tougher to get out um, but once you pass out you kind of gone through many cuisines you know you come to jack of many cuisines um, and we do master of none uh, but that's where we started so uh, indian was something which is very close to my heart i loved indian i i owned myself to an indian chef and and when i reached and and then i give Namita Bachchan and then Ajay Devgan, Akshay Kumar have been raving about it. They say, "Wow, it's amazing food." And then I go to London and say, "I start getting complaints." Uh, you know, and, and people say the food is stodgy, it's very spicy, it's very oily. So there was something that needed to be changed, and that change was the understanding of uh, uh, the, the you know your client. That's the most important part in any business. That you understand who you're serving. And the country wanted to taste flavors, but country did not want to taste the stodginess and the heaviness of Indian food. So we have to rework, rethink every single thing. So we don't want to take the ethos of the food. We don't want to take the the nature of Indian cuisine out. But at the same kind of time, we want to give them flavors. So for example, uh, you know, I did a chicken chutney uh, uh, in the menu, which was just like a chicken chutney, and I wrote that it's a five star, and people accepted it and they liked it because it's not very heavy. But it's high on, on spices. 
Uh, on the other hand, I did have a fish moili. But what I did with the fish moili was I took the fish, I uh, sprinkled a bit of chetan masala, that was my touch to it. I pan seared it, crisp. Then I uh, put it on ghee rice, I put some asparagus on the and drizzled some moili sauce. You know, so it kind of became a very international looking dish. But at the same time, it was light on flavors. It had the South Indian ethos. It had the whole, you know, uh, thing that if you're eating moli and, and rice together with fish, so you're getting all the flavors, but you're not just dipped in the curry. So that's how I kind of got through the menu. I think that um, gave a real push to the restaurant. Uh, when I when I reached there, the restaurant was doing about twenty thousand pounds a week, and uh, we took it to about eighty thousand pounds, which was forex. Yes, uh, you also received uh, the best chef over there. Uh, not really the best chef. It was basically the eight best chefs, the eight Indian best chefs. So London's got many many Indian chefs, and I think I was uh, blessed enough to get there. Also, I have uh, been through your food blog and the Thai Tea YouTube channel that you maintain. So, uh, what do you what do you suggest? Like, how we use digital media platforms to grow our business organically? Is it possible? What it doesn't make sense. I think, I, of course, it does because today, uh, you know, everything is moved to digital. I think digital is the next word. Uh, it is not uh, a word which is going to be on television. It's not a word which is going to be on, on newspapers. It's not going to be a word which is on tape. Uh, the word has moved digitally very, very strong. I think uh, communication will be sitting here and probably be shooting this video. Uh, tomorrow, you know, another piece in the US is probably listening to this uh, and in just a span of a few hours. Uh, why? Because I think it's become uh, more open uh, uh, and, and more shareable. So I think the way to go is digital. Now, how you use that digital platform is very, very important. So if, um, if it's a business, you know, it was always believed that you can't be uh, putting out more than one Instagram post a day. But I see now businesses putting three to four to five uh, posts a day because I think the market is on a rampage. So everybody wants to be out there. It's getting cluttered. So everybody wants to make a name out there. So I think there are a lot of pros and cons to the entire thing. But at the same time, there are strategies to be followed once you're doing digital media uh, to, to grow your business. It has to be consistent. There are some key factors, there are some hygiene factors. It has to be consistent. It's like, you know, going back to your wife or your girlfriend. You can't just go back after three days and say, hi, you know, you can't. You have to be consistent. You have to be there daily or you have to be there hourly. Whenever you set time, you have to be there. You have to have a course of action which is clearly shown to people that you know what it is that you do. Uh, and the third very, very important part is who are you is out there loud and clear in a small area of course and then you know that 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 helps. That is a very good mantra for you for all our B school students out there. Uh, just one last question. Like hospitality consulting, the Zion hospitality and the uh, Burgundy Box. I Burgundy Box is part of it. I've moved out of Burgundy Box now. I'm not sure my company. Is. So that's comparatively a very new genre for us. So can you just uh, give your insights? Yeah, so what has happened is that India is going through a big change in terms of the food industry. So, you know, you are well aware of Sodexo who caters to you on a daily basis. So this is a food service company. Then there is restaurant. Then there is uh, hotels. So in the, in the fine dining sector, or the restaurant sector where people actually go and spend money, uh, a lot has changed over a period of three to five years. Right? And you see that uh, you're eating out a lot more, your, your choices have become much more larger, uh, your, uh, you know, your demands have become more uh, global, it's not just regional anymore, you're not just going for a dosa or a dress anymore, you're going for So for that, I think this was very important that, uh, you know, uh, professionals started to get Previously, our country has seen five-star hotels and dhabas. Uh, there were few restaurants which were good restaurants. There were shettis who came in and, and opened those, you know, uh, dosa joints and everything which went went well. Then Tani restaurants or or hotel, whatever you want. But for the last seven to eight years, restauranting has started to level up in India in a good measure. So every city you go to, there are good restaurants. But the problem is that everybody wants to open a restaurant. They don't have to know how to open the restaurant. They don't know that there is a big study behind it. You must you do A and B and why must you put some money here and not in that. So there is nobody to guide them. They have the money, but they don't have the guidance. So that's where we saw the gap. 
as an hospitality company. I've worked 25 years in hotels. And I realized that there is a gap which I can support and fulfill. In the last two years, I've seen that there are multiple friends of mine who have jumped into this because they've also seen that gap. And uh, there's nothing more work to be done. Any suggestions for people who are interested in this field? Well, if one single suggestion, if you think that you have the money and you can go and open a restaurant, wrong thought. Uh, if you have the money, you should go along with the money to open it because you, it is a complete 100% sucking job. It will suck you in for the next two, three years. But if you're in it and game for it, then you're going to fly high. But if you're going to leave it on somebody else's shoulder and say, oh, somebody can run my business, Ownership and consistency is the key. And it's a daily job. You can't just do one thing one day great and then say, oh, I'll do it and then it's not it. So it is a consistently you know, giving in your time and effort. So nice having you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your insight. Well, I hope everybody does. Everybody will definitely do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.